This is the Raising Arrows podcast where we discuss all things large family homemaking and homeschooling. Welcome, friends. This is the Raising Arrows podcast, and I'm your host, Amy Roberts from RaisingArrows.net, and this is episode number 148, Homeschooling Boys Who Can't Sit Still. Okay, I have five boys, and so I do know a little something about this, and I will tell you just right off the bat here that boys are different from girls most of the time in this area. Most of the time, girls can sit still fairly early compared to boys. Now, there are anomalies on both sides. There are boys who can sit still when they're young, and there are girls who are very fidgety. So if you have a girl who's very fidgety, struggles to sit still, this podcast is for you. And if you have a boy who is very fidgety and can't sit still, this podcast is also for you. I just know personally that my boys were much more fidgety than my girls, and my girls grew out of it sooner than my boys did. And so I have a lot of moms who ask me particularly about boys in this area, and so that is why this podcast is titled that. But feel free to listen to this if you have a girl who also can't sit still. Now, before I go any further, I want to share with you today's podcast sponsor is Classical Conversations. We will be talking about them more, so stay tuned. I also want to share with you a book that came out years ago, I think when I was first homeschooling, actually before that, I know it was an older book even when I first started homeschooling, and it was called Better Late Than Early, and it was by Dr. Raymond Moore, and I believe his wife also had a hand in this particular book. Um, I think her name is Dorothy Moore, but they wrote about how it was better to start your children late in formal education than it is to try to push them into things early. Interestingly enough, a child may seem like they're really precocious and they're really ahead, maybe even gifted when they are four or five or six. And by the time they get to fourth or fifth grade, a lot of that has evened out. And so actually by waiting a little bit longer, especially with children who are not seeming to be quite as able to sit still, able to do the seat, work, able to focus on academic things at a young age, if you just wait a little bit, they actually will be right up with their peers very quickly. They will make leaps and bounds much quicker than the children who started at four or five years old and were just consistently doing the work. It is okay to wait and to start kids with formal education later. It has been a long time since I read that book by the Moors, but I do know that the research that they had done and the studies that they had done suggested that starting a child around eight or nine years old rather than the typical four, five, six years old actually gave kids a stronger start and a better jumping off point for their academic lessons. And that gives boys in particular time to mature and be able to sit a little bit longer. So I'll give you a little bit of a rundown of my own children, particularly my boys. My oldest child is a boy, and he is a boy who could not sit still. In fact, I was very aggravated by the fact that he couldn't sit still. Looking back, my parenting of him before the age of about four was less than stellar. I had some expectations of him that there was no way he could meet. He was just acting like a normal three and four year old little boy. And I was expecting him to do things and be able to sit still and do academic type things that he just was not capable of. And it was frustrating to me. And I'm sure it was incredibly frustrating to him. And then God really got a hold of me with how I saw my children. And I suddenly one day had this epiphany as he was doing some silly little four-year-old thing coming down the stairs of our house. And I realized he was doing a four-year-old thing. He was acting his age. He was four years old. And I had expectations that were nowhere near what a four-year-old boy was capable of. And God just really used that to rock my world when it came to realizing children are a blessing and their individual needs, their individual talents, their giftings, and who they are, their little personalities, and all the little nuances of who they are, are super important and something that I needed to be engaged 
engaged in. And so things just really changed for me there. And I realized he was just acting like a four-year-old little boy. And I began to realize that I needed to be aware of that and not be pushing him beyond what he was actually capable of. So he was a very busy little boy. We did a lot of outside activities. We did not do a lot of seat work. We did a lot of projects and fun, hands-on things. He was a really go, go, go kind of kid. He is 25 years old now, and he is still a go, go, go kind of kid. He likes to do things. He likes to keep busy. He is constantly on the move. I'm sure his wife is sometimes absolutely absolutely exhausted because he's just always got different projects and things he's doing. He's just a busy guy. And that is how God created him. That said, we were able to begin to slowly introduce him to the concept of sitting still for a period of time, doing seat work. And he actually ended up graduating summa cum laude from college. He can sit still. He can sit through an entire church service just fine. So trust me when I say that even boys who are very busy they can learn to sit still. It's just going to take some time and some maturity. So then on down the road, I have another little boy about eight years later. He's a pretty busy little guy, but he is actually not as busy as my oldest was. And he really didn't require a lot of hands-on projects and go, go, go kind of things. He was able to sit for longer periods of time, but he actually didn't start school formally until he was about seven because he had a speech impediment and we were working through that. And so I did start later with him. So that could be too what was going on there. And again, I had learned that little boys are just busy and I needed to figure out how to cater to that and work with what God had given me. So it's possible that he was a busy little guy, just like my older one. I just wasn't as aware of that because I had learned to deal with it. Then I had two little boys in a row who were very, very calm little boys. They actually were perfectly capable of sitting still well beyond what my other boys had been able to do. And they were very calm. They were able to do the seat work for school from a very young age. So I was kind of lulled into this idea that, oh, this is what little boys do again. I I went back to that place because it had been a long time since I had had boys. And so here I had these two little boys back to back and they were just calm as could be. And then I had my last little boy and that little boy was rowdy. I mean, he put my oldest little boy to shame. He was so busy, so busy. We actually had to make a schedule when he was a toddler that allowed us to homeschool while somebody else watched him because he had to be watched every second of the day. He would leave the house. He would stand on the furniture. He was very busy, very busy. Like I had never had a child like that. I could not believe all the things he would get into. And there was a period of time there where I did not know what to do with him. But I will share with you a little bit later what I did end up doing, and it ended up being fantastic. It was fantastic for everybody, but particularly for him. And so we're going to talk now about practical ideas for homeschooling boys who just can't seem to sit still. But first, let's talk about classical conversations. Are you concerned that your child's current education won't give them the skills necessary to succeed in any area of life, well, then you need to consider homeschooling with classical conversations. By applying the classical Christian model of education, the classical conversations curriculum encourages students to learn how to learn and how to think for themselves so they can adapt to every challenge life throws at them. Join the over 50,000 families in 50 countries who have chosen to educate their children with classical conversations and visit classicalconversations.com forward slash arrows to learn more. That is classicalconversations.com forward slash A-R-R-O-W-S. All right, so when you are considering these boys that you have that do not seem to be able to sit still and you're getting ready to homeschool, the first thing you need 
to decide or determine is whether or not this is defiance or a lack of readiness. Are they being defiant? Are they purposely not sitting still, not doing the work because there's some sort of defiance in them? They just are giving you a hard time about it because that's their motivation is they just don't wanna do the work. Or is this simply not readiness? They're just not ready to sit in a seat and do seat work for very long at any time. And this is a hard thing to determine. What I would encourage you to do is to probably just take a break anyway. We had a situation many years ago where we had a child who was just not getting it when it came to phonics. She was not getting it. And we ended up taking a six month break and when we came back, she got it. It was like all the light bulbs went on and she'd figured it out. She was not ready to learn to read. But six months later, just like that book talked about, The Better Late Than Early, she was ready and she took off like lightning. So that may be the case. And even if you can't tell if it's defiance or lack of readiness, err on the side of caution that it potentially is just not readiness. Now, I'm not advocating you wait six months. I'd say wait six weeks, take a break, come back to it. But there are some ways that you can ease your boys and your busy little girls into learning how to sit still. But just keep in mind that you're always going to be checking, is this defiance or is this lack of readiness? And lack of readiness can sometimes look like defiance. But I think as a mother, you can tell whether or not your child is trying to get out of the work or whether they just are not quite ready for the work. Because frankly, even a child who doesn't seem to be able to sit still for very long will have days where they actually do sit still fairly well for a few minutes and you can see that there's focus there. And if you can see that there is focus and then other days they're like, nope, I'm not doing this, or they say something nasty to you, that's more likely defiance. If day in and day out they are struggling and they are frustrated and they are banging their head on the table, and they are falling apart anytime you introduce something to them, quite possibly that is a lack of readiness. You need to take a break. Then the next thing you can do as you ease into helping them learn how to sit still for a period of time is to simply practice. Practice at home, set out a chair, have them sit for two minutes in the chair, or even start with just 30 seconds if you feel like that's what you need to do. 30 seconds, build up to a minute, Have them come to the table and put them at the table during homeschool time. Start doing like a morning time or a read aloud or something like that in the living room, in the dining room. Have them sit for two pages of the read aloud and then allow them to get up. Have them sit for 30 minutes while you go over some lesson that you're doing and then they're dismissed. Start with these incremental building up of time with them sitting and being calm and listening and participating in the homeschooling. Another place you can practice is at church. I know a lot of parents lament the fact that kids who don't sit still very well, they struggle to have them in the service with them. And often churches have something like children's church where the child can go there. But if you are working on having your child sit still, I'd encourage you to make sure that you can bring the child back to children's church a little bit late and have them sit with you for 10 minutes before taking them back. And then a few Sundays later, try 15 minutes and just slowly build on that until they are sitting longer and longer periods of time with you in church. Make sure that they know it's not a punishment. You are well within your right to give them a snack if that's allowed in your church sanctuary. You are well within your right to let them color while they are sitting there. They do not have to sit there, you know, strapped to the chair and they can't move. I am not an advocate of that 
at all. And that's something we're going to talk about here in a little bit about keeping their hands busy. It can often be something that actually helps them to sit still longer. So practice at home, practice at church, practice at other places. You know, you do not want children who are just running around all over the place. You do want children to learn how to sit still. And so it is something that you may have to practice and work up to. Now, once you've got them doing some seat work in your homeschool, be sure that you're taking breaks or you're giving them breaks. One thing that we did with my really rowdy fifth little boy was we would let him go ahead and leave the table. He would do a little bit with us and then I'd let him go because he was not going to be able to sit that long and he was actually going to become very disruptive if I didn't. And so he would stay for a bit. Usually he could manage about 30 minutes and then he would go off and play. And really, it hasn't been until about the last year that he has been able to sit through all of morning time without asking if he can leave. And he is 10 years old. So it has taken him some time to learn how to sit quietly. Now he sits all the way through a church service with us and our church services are fairly long. And he is able to sit through morning time but he really, really, really likes it when we have hands-on projects. And that is something that I allow all of my children to do while we are doing morning time and while we are at church. They all bring a notebook and pencil and they all are allowed to draw at the homeschool table. I do allow Play-Doh, I allow clay. I do have some kids who like to paint while we are doing our morning time. It keeps their brains engaged but their hands being engaged allows them to sit while we are homeschooling. So you see that correlation between movement and being able to sit still. Something needs to move. In fact, I don't know if you know this or not, there are products that you can actually put at your dining room table for your children to use while you are homeschooling that allows them to fidget without creating a lot of disruptions. One of those products that I think is just awesome is a band, a stretchy band that goes across the bottom of the chair. They can put their feet up on that band and they can basically just bounce their feet. It keeps them from tapping the floor or tapping the table and causing the whole table or floor to jump. They are just fidgeting at their own seat. And so that bouncy um, rubber band that's across the bottom of their chair allows them to fidget like that and not cause disruption to other people. And I will link to that product down in the show notes because it's just a really great product. Another thing that I know some parents do is put the like birthing balls or the bouncy balls as chairs for their children who are having trouble being able to sit still. I am not as big an advocate of that because I I know personally that my boys would eventually be throwing the ball around instead of actually sitting on it. So if you have a child that you think would benefit from that, that is an idea. But I know for me personally, my boys would end up creating chaos with this bouncy ball. I am also not a big advocate of like fidget spinners because they are on the table. Unless you can keep them under the table and keep them quiet, something that they can fidget with, I don't really like those as much. I'd actually rather they were drawing in their notebooks or playing with Play-Doh or painting than just spinning a little fidget spinner around. But I think it is important for a child who struggles to sit still, to find ways to help them sit still. And sometimes that is going to be something that allows them to fidget in another way so that their body can sit where they are at and listen to the homeschooling lessons or listen to church. Another thing you can do in your homeschool that goes along with taking breaks is go outside, do something different, change the venue of where you are homeschooling at. It keeps their little minds engaged and it keeps them moving and that allows them to stay focused on what they are learning. So if you can, when you take breaks or when you are changing gears with something else you are doing in the curriculum, go someplace else, move everybody to a different room or move them outside. And then finally, do not let school drag on endlessly. 
Don't let them just sit there and sit there and sit there because they haven't gotten all their math done. They haven't gotten all their phonics done. They need to finish this project before they can be done with school for the day. Don't let that happen in your homeschool. Everybody, you included mom, need an end to your homeschool day. You don't need to sit there endlessly. They don't need to sit there endlessly. They need to know when the end of this particular thing is. They need to know when's the end of math. Like if I happen to not get all the math done and I am I still gonna be here tomorrow at 9 a.m. when we start this all over again? No, they don't need to do that. In fact, there was a period of time where my now 14 year old had math that was taking him two hours to do. Well, that's ridiculous. Math should not take anybody two hours to do unless maybe you're a college level student, but he was not. So I told him to split the math lessons in half and only do this much of the math lesson and then tomorrow do the second half because nobody should have to sit there that long doing math. That's not fair to your child to ask them to do something academic that takes an inordinate amount of time. And it may be that it would take another one of your children 30 minutes to do and for some reason it's taking them longer. There again, it may be they are not ready for it and you need to take a break from it. Or it may be that the concepts are very difficult for them and you need a tutor or you need to work with them more. Or it may be that they are simply just struggling a little bit with it and you need to cut it in half and allow them to do the work one day and finish the work the next day. As a homeschool mom, you get to determine that. You get to decide when your children do the work, how much of the work they do and how long they get to take for that work. Now, some of you may be thinking, yes, but I have a child who dilly dallies and that's the reason they're not getting this done. Again, be very honest with yourself and take a hard look. Are they actually dilly dallying or are they struggling and there is something more that needs to be done? It's quite possible that it is the latter, that there is something they are not understanding and you need to get to the root of it. I had that very situation with my now 17 year old. He seemed to be dilly dallying with his science. Come to find out, he said he was reading the same paragraph over and over and over in his science book and it was not making sense to him. We ended up going with an audiobook and then eventually a private tutor, and it worked out fabulously because he is a very auditory child, and so reading those big scientific terms over and over was not working for him. But you put the audiobook in, and somebody else reads it to him, and suddenly he was retaining all of it. So it may not be a dilly dallying situation. It may be that your child needs something different and they are struggling and they don't know how to convey that to you. So as you go into this next school year, just to recap, make sure that the fact that they can't sit still is not defiance, but rather a lack of readiness or vice versa. And then if you realize that yes, they are ready, then practice, take it slow, a little bit at a time, practice at home, practice at church, practice in other places, and just take a little bit of time to help them learn how to sit still. Do not be afraid to let them have things in their hands to do while you are teaching them and while they are sitting still, that will help them to sit still longer. Take breaks, go outside, change venues, do things differently. Get them some sort of fidgeting type thing that goes on the chair or something they can sit on or something they can hold in their hands. And then don't let school just drag on for them. Now I mentioned that I was gonna tell you what we ended up doing for our son who was so busy and, and what really worked for us. I did say you know, that we had this schedule that we put together where somebody took turns just kind of being with him and playing with him. Well, when he got a little bit older and it was time for him to start integrating into our homeschool, the thing that we did was a curriculum called a year of playing skillfully. We also did peaceful presses, um, peaceful preschoolers 
Center, I think that's the name of it, or Peaceful Preschool. And we did those combined, and they had a lot of hands-on projects. And he had so much fun. We made so many memories. And he was learning because it was all very kinesthetic. And I had never done preschool in the past. I had always just kind of let the kids run and explore. And this was the first time I had picked up an actual preschool curriculum. And it turned out to be a fantastic addition to our homeschool life. And it gave him those hands-on projects. It was things that he could do and interact with. And it turned out to be so incredibly wonderful. And so it may be that you need to turn things on their head, try something different. Not all of your children are going to be alike. And so if you have a child, a boy or a girl who just does not seem to be able to sit still, there is some unique gifting in that. Look for it, learn more about them, grow with them, challenge them, and praise God for who they are. Friends, this has been the Raising Arrows podcast. Don't forget to check out classicalconversations.com forward slash arrows to learn more about the classical conversation model of education. And I will see you next time.